Your stance, as you said, from a clean sheet, and, and you, you said you've made sort of mistakes with the pacing and, and you know, some triumphs, which is good. Is, is your whole sort of strategy with Farmer sort of to be predicated on, let's say, a high turnover of players over this season as you start to, you know, um, decide on those that you want to keep? I think I've got an idea where that question's coming from. Um, and here's the ending, we had a high turnover of player. Um, players. The, the chairman wouldn't give out more than a one-year contract. Um, and to be honest, didn't want players on contract at all. Um, and so we suffered in that some players left um, when we didn't want them to and we couldn't control that. Ideally, I would like to think that I could sign 20 players by next Saturday and those 20 players would be the same 20 that finished the season um, and that got us promoted. But football as it is, players go through in and out of form. Um, we will make decisions as and when, to be honest. Ideally, no, that's not the case, but sometimes it is. For a club of the size of Hazen Union, and operating in the league that they were, it was a necessity. And I would like to think that, that won't be the case. But again, it's it's difficult to say that when you, I've now got to sign players that I don't really, I can't really see play until until August. So I might come the end of August where it's plainly obvious that the, the left back is up to it. Um, I would like the opportunity to be able to get that player out and um, sign an all. Um, what I would say is that I think we had three totally different teams at Hazen Penny. Um, but every season, despite budget increases, decreases, we improved the league position. So we were constantly improving the team. Um, and it's, I'm very proud of that fact because it was an awful lot of work. Um, we worked incredibly hard on it. Um, and it turned out to, I think, to be a successful time. Um, so I would hope to replicate that. Richard, apologies for being late, um, but I would like to say I heard you on the non-league show. Is it been nice to admit you made mistakes? The previous manager, I think, thought he could walk on walks. Um, so I don't know if the two issues I'm going to raise have been discussed before. One is discipline, and the second one is contingency for training facilities. True. Okay. Um, Last season, the season before last, towards the end of the season, there were a lot of silly bookings picked up for too much verbal. And I am of the opinion that that reflected on the last campaign. A lot of players were, in, were not available at the beginning of the season, and there was a slow start. What's your stance on discipline? I feel so an ex-football referee, so I've is asked with that. I think we got a lot of silly bookings for too much rabbit. The second thing is, Part of the reasoning for going full time is that you're not paying out for training facilities. What happens if we have a bad weather? Have you built contingency to allow for that to be addressed? Uh, first of all, on discipline, um, we will have a fine sheet that all players will um, sign before the start of the season, so there'll be standard fines. One of my biggest things is turning up late. Um, I hate that, I think it's disrespectful to the management to the players and to the to the tops. Um, so that'll be a, a big thing. Um, dissent is a pointless offence as far as I'm concerned. Um, Talking will be pointless, so um, there'll be a standard fine for that as well. Um, continuing offences will result in bigger fines. Um, I've found that um, you can talk as much as you want and talk about personalities and, and character. But the best way to get players' attention is to hit them in the pocket. So that will be a, a standard across the board um, for some for the first team squad. Um, on the contingency for training facilities, um, we have had that conversation. Um, we we do some we do have sessions at the pool, pool sessions, and I think I hope I'm not being um, jumping ahead of myself here, but we're in the process of negotiating with a, a, a hotel that has access to pool facilities. Um, so that's one area. There are also um, both myself and Gareth we're very close to the training ground, so we know the area and know what else is available. Um, we came in this week and spoke to Ed and. Um, about other, um, other facilities that we can use, indoor facilities through G pitches. Um, but sometimes the weather is that bad and if there's nothing else available, sometimes you just have to go and take them on a five mile run, um, which unfortunately if it's really they, they get wet. Um, we've been at this a while now and, and we are aware of, of having a plan A, plan B, plan C and plan D. Um, and we'll have that and we'll be set up for that. Um, and that was the the biggest thing that we had a problem with in the first year of the conference in that we had so many midweek games and literally the Thursday night session was a recovery session so we couldn't we couldn't make any changes we literally had to go with what we had 
Um, whereas now, training every day, you've got the opportunity to change things. Um, if, if something's not working out, then we'll try something else. Hello, Gary. Um, just to ask, do you have a preferred plane formation? To be honest, not really. Um, I think it comes down to the players that we've got. We have various uh, systems that we use at Hayes and Getty. Um, flat back four with um, uh, four across the middle, one shadow strike and a, and a one plane uh, further up the field. Then we also tried a 352 that we were very successful with, and extremely successful with, um, attacking wise. But I mean, that season we conceded 83 goals and scored 90 odd. Um, and it was. We gave that up because we, we couldn't find the players to match that system. So, uh, to be honest, it depends on the type of player. Um, we, to give an example, Dale Binns, um, when we played a, a midfield four, he was excellent. I think we won 15 games in a row and got to the playoffs, and, and then eventually won the playoffs. When we then tried to change that system in the conference to a 3 5 2, he couldn't play. Um, and literally came to us and said, I can't play in that system. So we left him out. Um, so, it's matching the system to the players. and finding a way to win football games, basically. Um, it doesn't really matter what system you play. Um, if you've got the right players in the right system, then it, it worked, basically. I guess just kind of follow up on what you just said. Um, previously, we, we've had managers here who have been slow to react to um, situations on the pitch where we've not been playing so well, things have been going against us, and everyone else, and it's easy to stand on the terraces and say, you, know, you should change this, you should change that, you know. But they've been very slow to react to um, um, the way teams play against us. Uh, and by the time they do react and change, change the, the way we're playing, it's usually too late. Uh, are you the type of manager that will look at a situation and quickly make a decision that, well, not, not maybe instantly, but look at a situation and say, right, well, potentially we could be 2 0 down, I need to change something, I'm going to change something. Um, because, say, in the past, these sort of situations have arisen. And the manager to be very slow to react to those. I think in, in that situation, you really have to know your players. Um, I was the type of centre forward that would do nothing for 89 minutes and then score a goal in the last minute, and people would say, oh, I had a terrible game, you win the game 1 0. Um, so if you know your players, um, plus there's also um, the element of sometimes the people on the terraces don't know what's going on during the week. So you don't know whether a player's carrying an injury, you might say that a player on the bench is, is there. He can only really get 15 minutes out of him or half an hour. So why didn't he start if he's on the bench? But there's, there's so many different variables that um, it's my job really to manage those. And again, all you could do is look up track record. When I took the, my previous job, um, the view was that I didn't have a track record and that I wasn't very good at what I did. And I always said, well, do it at the end of the season. I think based on the um, budget that we have, um, I would like to think that we will put it above our weight because that's what we've always done. Um, uh, and if that's the case, then hopefully we'll be successful. It just depends on what everybody else has. And I can't predict that because you can only control what goes on in your own club. <laughs> <laughs> Management style. Brian Clough or Don Ring. <laughs> How old do you think I am? <laughs> um, my, I, was, I was brought up on... I was brought up on Brian Clough. My father was a, a big Brian Clough fan. I can remember um, the 79 European Cup final, 90 European Cup final. Um, Don Revy was a little bit before my time. Um, from what I've, I've met Jack Charlton, um, I've met Billy Bremner, um, so I know, I've spoken to them and, and I know the way he compared. I think different eras have different types of managers and in, in change the era, that manager might not have been as, as successful. Um, I think Don Revy didn't have the same success at other Places that he was at, that he had at Leeds. So sometimes you've got to match the management style to the club. Uh, Brian Clough was, I think, apart from probably Alex Ferguson, he's only one to, to create two totally different teams um, that were at Derby and Moss Forest. So I would suggest a mixture of the, a mixture of the two. Um, I don't think I do some of the things that Brian Clough did. Um, I don't think I do some of the things that Tom but, um, but yeah, I was, I was brought up on Brian Clough. My, my father was, he was his, whenever he went, my father followed him and I, like I said, I do remember some of the teams and I met some people that played for him and some of the stories that they say is um, you couldn't get away with them these days. No, but he so, made a little club play big. Exactly, and, and he got, um, got them playing a certain style and I, I would like to think that I would play that style but then um, 
everybody you talk to, Steve Perlman, um, any senior guy from that era would say that Leeds were the best team. Um, and that they, it was the other side of the game, the, the nastiness that's bothered. So, yeah, I would like to think that we that we will pass the game, pass the ball and play the game in, in the right way. But um, to be honest, I wouldn't say I'd be either of those. I'm just me. Happy being here. Yeah, no. Just a question on, on midweek fixtures. This club, under the last manager, changed our midweek fixtures from a Tuesday night to a Wednesday night. Uh, it does affect a lot of people uh, working. Like it doesn't matter to me, but a lot of people find it difficult. What is going to happen next season? Is it going to be changed back to Tuesdays and remain on Wednesday? Okay, well, not maybe not. Can we send the paperwork off to the conference, which we have to do for the handbook? Um, the day of plan is put down for Wednesday. Midweek games are put down for Wednesday. We can change that. We can turn it back to Tuesday. Um, yes, thank you. Perfectly honest, that's something that I haven't even thought about. Um, I, with a full-time club, I, I don't think it, a full-time playing staff, it doesn't make doesn't make much difference to the playing staff. Um, I do understand that, um, that it could be difficult for some supporters. Um, I would suggest if enough supporters would ask that question, ask them to be changed to Tuesday, the club would then listen. I think what I have found is that Simon, it, um, Ed and, and they have been very receptive every time I've spoken to them, so when people ask, I, I think obviously your personal situation you prefer a Tuesday. Um, you may well find that the gentleman behind you would prefer a Wednesday. It's, I, I think it's, if enough people want it, then maybe you should contact the club and say that and, and we'll change it. I don't have a particular preference. I think it, it, it would allow me to go and watch a game on Tuesday. That, that, is, that is, I think, the reason it was changed, but it worked. So, I, I would imagine so, but also what it means is that everybody else can come and watch, can watch us, which would allow them the, the knowledge about us. So it's swings and roundabouts, to be honest. Um, whatever the majority would prefer, that's, that's what we'll go with. Just in this room now, who'd want Tuesday? Who'd want Tuesday? Put your hand up. Oh, dear, what was I yeah. As long as we're winning. Yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> Just be winning. <laughs> yeah, I'd suggest it's going to be Wednesday then. <laughs> Any more questions? Have you actually signed anything? No. Questions? Are we going to you said a few times about defence is, is your weakness. Um, I appreciate you don't necessarily know the players you're getting in the moment, but what are you going to put in place to perhaps prevent that or make it more uh, more stronger? Best is I've got to play as. It's, um, yeah, it's players. Um, we did, we had a lot of problems last season um, and we, we worked very, very hard from when we start to work very, very hard from I think uh, this January for the Wimbledon game, yeah. um, but very, very hard. And within six weeks, we, we started to turn around. Um, and we have a journalist saying, You've obviously done something this week to work on defending because you on the Tuesday and the Saturday, we kept a clean sheet. And I said, No, we've done the work in the last eight weeks. And that's that's what it takes. You don't just change something for one training session and all of a sudden the players have it. Um, it's time for the players and, and make sure that we've got the work done. Um, bring three and cotton water. I can see them 33 league goals. Um, that's, I think, if you start from a strong defence, you've always got an opportunity. Having said that, been a former centre forward, you want to see goals. Yes, I have signed a contract, and I'm not really, I don't really think it's, I, I prefer to talk to Simon as to whether he wants that release, but yes, I have signed a contract, as has Gareth.